Hey everyone, welcome back to Lumber Capital Log Yard. I'm Emerald and today I'm going to be going over how to run the Scrapple trailer. If you have experience in running hydraulics, this will be a piece of cake. If not, it takes a little bit of learning, but let's get started. This is our Medivic grapple trailer that we use for moving all of our logs around here at the log yard. And it's a very important machine here. So I wanted to go over how we run it. I'm going to start by hooking it up to the tractor first. Of course, you can use it unhitched, but I have to move it. So I'm going to start by doing that. It can be a little bit tricky to line it up because it has to be perfect, but the, other than that, the farmer's hitch is pretty easy to hook up. Uh, I, I know I showed it in the last video, but it's just a pin and you just back right up to it. Uh, sometimes we've had trouble with it getting kind of jammed in there, but usually it's fairly simple. It's really easy to back up the tractor too, and you can see right out the window when you're backing up. So. That makes it a lot easier than like a pickup truck or something. To turn it on, you just turn it on, <laughs> onto the on switch, and then just turn on the choke, ramp that up just a twidge, I usually do, and then pull it. And it starts up just fine. You just have to flip that off. You can hear that it changes sound. Let it warm up for a little bit. It's always a good policy with any machine uh, before you turn it up. All right, usually you have to put the feet up just a little bit more because this sinks down. So lift it up so then your foot is off the ground and then it's just another pin. And then it has a spot where it sits right here. Just attach it onto there and put the pin through it. It's a nice little spot for it to sit in the meantime. We've broken a few of these feet and so this is not the one that came with it. Uh, now you have to put up the feet. Now we are ready to go with it. You have to remember to put up the legs, otherwise you'll drag them. So you have to turn it on and then it has to be turned up. But then when I am driving around with it, I usually just turn it down, but leave it on. That way you're not turning it off and on, off and on, because that wouldn't be good for the machine. Depending on how high your hitch is, is it might really want to sink down and that can be a little bit scary but that's just normal so it can sit down onto the weight of the hitch there and now we are ready to go. You probably can't tell on the video, but we are on a little bit of a grade here, which makes it a little bit more scary to run this. This thing likes more flat surfaces, but uh, we're gonna make it work here. These are just small logs. They're uh, what, the logs that we use for our peeled posts. So I'm going to load a few up in here. When you're positioning your trailer to load, you want to be as close to the logs as possible but one thing that you have to be aware of is the fact that your feet still need to come down so there has to be room for them. Uh, it's just something that you want to mess around with to see what works best for you but being as close as possible sure helps because you don't want to be reaching that arm out because uh, as the analogy that my boss gave us was that if you hold out your arm like this and then somebody hangs on it it's not going to be nearly as strong as when it's like this. So that I thought was a good analogy when we're talking about the grapple. You don't want to be reaching out far because it's going to put a lot of stress and you don't want to roll 
the uh, trailer and that is entirely possible. This is a pretty dangerous machine. You have to, have to, have to make sure that your feet are down because you will roll the trailer just like that if you forget to put these things down. Yes, it takes some time and just getting used to, but that is a must. So that's going to be the first thing we do before we start loading. So like I said before, these are fairly small logs, so they're really easy and don't require much thinking and forethought. But when it comes to larger logs, one thing that I wanted to mention was that the first log you pick up is going to be your hardest because there is no weight in this trailer. And so you really have to think ahead on that because I wouldn't go and pick up a really big log first thing because you could literally just tip over the trailer that way. So you really have to be aware of that. I try to get weight in there first before I think about doing anything else just so there's more stability there. Uh, and so usually I'll do like two small logs in there first, one at a time. I know I picked up like three at a time with that, but that's not usually how it is with the larger hemlock. And then that way there, there's weight in there and you can go after some of those bigger logs. If you guys are used to running hydraulics, then this one will be obvious, but it's really important that you're not jerky with when you're running this machine. It's really just nice and easy movements, easing into it nice and slow, uh, because if you jerk it around, then the whole log can flip up and toss around and it can get pretty scary pretty fast. There is a little bit of a diagram to go off of here. Obviously at this point, I'm not still using it. You just learn, you know, muscle memory and everything, but that can be handy when you get started. I mean, honestly, I struggle to see how this even makes any sense. The middle one makes sense. I don't really know what this is even trying to show here. Uh, those two make sense. I don't really know what that. <laughs> One of the reasons why I say this machine is so dangerous is because you are able to hit yourself with the logs if you're not careful. When you're bringing them in here, it can swing and it can come right up here and knock you out. So uh, that is something to be very aware of and it can happen accidentally very easily. It does not take a lot. So it just takes going very slow and steady. And if the log swings, uh, you're screwed, so slow and steady wins the race.
we always put the claw back in its rest position when the trailer is empty. This way the weight is down onto something uh, because there is a chance that once it's off and settling the arm could uh, topple over and that way it's just nice and safe. We don't like leaving stuff in the trailer uh, at the end of the day when we've wrapped up and we're heading home. It's good for it to be empty just so it's uh, nice and neat and no safety hazard. There's actually a sticker on it that says grease monthly, but we grease this machine way more than once a month. We do use it all the time, but um, yeah, definitely more than that. Besides oil changes, greasing it is really the only maintenance it needs. Uh, so it's pretty simple to maintain and that makes it nice and easy. Like I said, it's a lot of grease. There are a ton of zerts on here. There's actually four zerts on just this one piece right here. There's two on both sides. So they're all over this machine. I've actually never seen a machine with so many zerts on it. So it takes quite a while to grease and get everyone. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram at lumbercapital07. And I'll see you guys Monday.